Glory. Come on, lift your hands up and get another drink. Yes, we don't want anyone to leave her straight. We have designated drivers. It's called Holy Ghost. <laughs> Father, fill, 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 and overflow in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen? That means you got it. Glory. How's everybody? Are you blessed and highly flavored? Thank you, Jesus. Refreshing in God's presence. You know what? Are you still holding on to whatever it takes? Are you still willing to do whatever it takes? That's the challenge. That's the God's challenge. You know how many times we've said that? Lord, I'll do whatever it takes. Well, let me tell you, he's, he's catching up on all the challenges that have been brought before his throne. <laughs> Everything that everyone has committed to and said and made a vow to, he's bringing it all up now. <laughs> In 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Oh, glory. Thank you, Master. 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 9, or verse 4. He's breaking the chains of bondage. He's shaking everything that can be shaken. Because he's coming for a blemish-free bride. He can play all the religion you want. But he's looking for those who know him. Know him. I'm going to say that again. That know him. Verse 4, let's speak it. I thank my God always concerning you for the grace or the plan of God which was given to you by Christ Jesus. That you were enriched in everything by him in what? All utterance and all knowledge. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. So that you come short of no gift. Hmm. Eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now I want you to come short of no blessing. That gift means blessing. So that you come short of no blessing from God. Amen. You're waiting for the revelation from Jesus to confirm. What's he want to do? Confirm our conduct. So everybody understands why he wants himself expressed through me and you. Jesus is always looking for Jesus. Oh, glory. Waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the what? To the what? End. Wow. So he's going to confirm our conduct, whether it's healthy or unhealthy. Hello? <laughs> he's going to confirm it with conviction. He's also going to set limitations of boundaries so that we don't become foolish. Does everybody understand? Directions. So that we be maintain an, a place of blameless. Watch this. Verse 9. God is what? Well, actually, let's go back to verse 8. I'm sorry. Who will also confirm you to the end that you may be what? Blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus, or Jesus Christ, our Lord. Again, we come short of no blessing, waiting for a revelation from Jesus to confirm your conduct whether it's healthy or unhealthy. With conviction and he sets limitations of boundaries so that we maintain a place of position where we, he can say, he's blameless. She's blameless. Amen? Proverbs 29. Oh, happy days. There's a sweet anointing here tonight. It's very aggressive. Shh. 
شرب كفر كيرمها. Proverbs 29. Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. <laughs> the word of God is worth the drive. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 18. Is everybody there? Whoever walks blameless. Hello, I'm on the wrong one. Never mind. Okay. Where there is no, where there is no revelation, the people cast off the restraints of the flesh. But happy is he who keeps the law. See, there's no restraints of the flesh when there's no revelation. Now, the law or the word is a witness of restraints because it maintains. But revelation, I want you to grab hold of this, could only come from the presence of Jesus. Only revelation comes from the presence of Jesus. Illumination comes from the written words of Jesus. See, a revelation from the presence from Jesus causes us to straighten up, put the restraints on, take dominion over the flesh, be more connected, hating the flesh. Illumination will help you sustain it. This is called a healthy limitation. These restraints are called healthy limitations. Limitations. Does everybody understand it? See, there is healthy limitations and unhealthy limitations. And that's what we're talking about tonight. Healthy and unhealthy limitations. And Matthew 16. Matthew 16, 13. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, some others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said to them, But who do you say that I am? I love this because what he's saying, Do you know me? Do you really know me? Because if you really knew me, you wouldn't do the things you do. If you really knew me. See, if Jesus is always before you, you're a totally different person. Why? Because now you're walking in the presence of God. You're totally different. The anointing keeps you different than the, from the world. It keeps you different. It keeps you a distance from the way your old man thinks. In fact, the way your old man speaks. And he says, who do you say that I am? And verse 16, Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ the son of the living God. In other words, you're the eternal presence of God Almighty and power. That's who you are. And what, did, and what did Jesus answer and say to him? Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is what? In heaven. But he was in the presence of Jesus, wasn't he? That's how he got revelation. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock, on this revelation, on the foundation, that I am the anointed one, I'll build my church. And the gates of hell cannot prevail against the anointing. And there's something I'm going to do for you. I'm going to give you keys of the kingdom to what, whatever you bind on earth, you will be able to bind in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth, you'll loose in heaven. Why? I'm going to give you access to the heavenlies while you're still on this earth. And whatever you take care of on this earth, it's going to take care of in the heaven. But you've got to have the anointing. Because without the anointing, it's not effective. Then it's just words. And see, the powers of darkness know whether you're walking in the anointing or not. Amen? Because you're a new, new creation. Revelation from the presence of Jesus is released by the Father. <laughs> now delivered by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Revelation creates a desire to change. And it rejects unhealthy limitations that prevent change. We want to change all the time. If you're not an individual that wants to change, there's a problem with you. 
Hello. Well, I'm, I'm okay. Bummer. I hate when people tell me they're okay. You're not okay. None of us is okay. We wouldn't be here if we were okay. <laughs> Amen? How are you? I'm blessed and highly favored. Praise God. Cut the okays. Sounds like a cereal. 2 Corinthians 6. You know what okay means? I'm faking it until I make it. <laughs> the problem is not everyone does it. Hallelujah! That's a warrior sound. Hallelujah! Glory! Glory! Are you warriors? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Everyone say, glory. glory. That's it. See, the Marines got their grunt. We got ours. Glory. Or eternal third dimensionals. Glory. Look, okay, you get around a living creature, you ain't going to say nothing else but glory. <laughs> verse 11. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 11. Let's speak it. All Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not what? Restricted. Is restricted a limitation? Yeah. You're not bound by us. <laughs> you are bound. You are restricted by your own affections, which means soulish entanglements. Which means what? Soulish entanglements. Well, there's emotional. Now, in return for the same, I speak to you as children. <laughs> you also be open. This is powerful. He said you're restricted by your own soulish or emotional entanglements. So I got to speak to them as children because they act like immature children. Harmful restrictions of limitations. He tells me, he says, listen, don't be unevenly yoked. With unbelievers. That means don't act like an unbeliever either. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion is light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with believer? Or what part is a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I'll dwell in them. I'll walk among them. I'll be their God. They'll be my people if they do something. If they come out of worldly living. Soulish entanglements. Come out from among them. Be separate, says the Lord. Then, and don't touch what's unclean. And then I will receive you and I'll be a father to you and you'll be my sons and daughters. See, soulish entanglements are promoted by self-centeredness. With a mouth that wants to be heard. Ooh. There's usually blame, grumbling, complaining. It encourages the loss of identity and disregards the law of freedom. That is to deny, what's the law of freedom? Deny yourself, pick up the cross and follow. Amen? Its foundation is pride. That's what its foundation is. God puts healthy restrictions he puts a healthy restriction on an individual that's in that place. It's a healthy restriction. What is the healthy restriction? He won't allow that person to advance. It's a healthy restriction. He's holding that person back. Why? Because he knows if that person advances more, it's going to bring more shame to his name down the road. He will not allow that person to advance. He will not promote that person. That person may cry out for escape. He doesn't answer them. No answered prayer to escape until he sees the fight to remove limitations. Does everybody understand that? He, that person must be in a place of consistent behavior that pleases God for a period of time. Then he'll assist and promote. Remember, God is always looking for consistency no matter what. So many times we want to be rewarded because we are good kids for, you know. 
when we were kids, you know, we obeyed mom and dad, right? We wanted to be rewarded with a sucker or something or a toy. You know, you, you didn't misbehave in the car on the way to the store. If you tell, you know, we were always bribed as kids, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't stop. <laughs> People want to be rewarded for doing nothing these days. In 2 Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse something. I guess we go to verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it please. You therefore my son be strong in the grace. That word grace means plan. Amen. Be strong in the plan that God has. That is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. Commit these to faithful is someone faithful, consistent? Yeah. Men or women who will be able to teach others. In other words, who can be a witness to others. You know, your greatest teaching to someone else is not by what you speak. It's how you live. How your conduct is. How your behavior is. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one entangled in the... In the uh, no... No one, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. That means soulish entanglements. That he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Be strong in a plan. Commit these to consistent men able to be a witness to others in conduct and behavior. Don't get entangled in soulish affairs of this world. Be careful. In Philippians chapter 2. Healthy and unhealthy limitations. How many of y'all know the enemy likes to put limitations on you? Amen? Some people have them and don't even know it. Philippians 2. In verse 12. Therefore, my beloved, as you've always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. I would say that's a healthy limitation. <laughs> for it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Do all things without what? Complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Wow. In other words, the fear of the Lord is a healthy limitation that restrains the flesh and its mouth. It keeps in us in a position. Everybody remember we're getting in position. What's the two things that keep us in position? To seek and to sow. Seek and to sow. Seek and to sow. Seek and to sow. Uh, I want to go back in Philippians and verse 1. Chapter 2, verse 1. Is everybody there? Well, you couldn't go too far. Speak it, please. Philippians 2, verse 1. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and one mind. Boy, and that's God's pleasure, let me tell you. That's his desire. Let nothing be done through what? Selfish ambitions or conceit. Like-minded as thoughts like Christ. Nothing to be done through a selfish ambition or conceit. In other words, 
That, that's when a person thinks I'm better. I'm better than others. Amen. I do more than others. I'm a, I'm, I, I read my Bible. In other words, they're always self-promoting. Even I'm a graduate. I'm a graduate. We only did nine months. Tell me you're a graduate a year after. <laughs> or I pray more. Or I witness more. Or I do this more. Or I do, you do see, that's all. I, 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 I. And this is a harmful limitation put on individuals by the devil. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than him, what? Himself. Let each of you look out not only for your own interests, but also for the interests of what? Others. Let this mind be in you. Let these thoughts be in you, which is also in who? Christ Jesus. He said, man, will you start thinking like him? Who being in the form of God did not consider robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking a form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Wow. Wow. Hmm. See, this limitation brought on the end by the enemy is called bondage. Amen? It's called what? Bondage. <laughs> what it's, its purpose is the enemy is trying to attempt, uh, 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 attempt to turn the heart back to the foundation of pride. That's one of the ploys of the enemy. Always trying to turn the heart back to the foundation of pride. In Psalm 18. Psalm 18, 20. Is everybody there? Let's speak it, please. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness and according to the cleanness of my hands. He has recompensed me. I think the hands, cleanness of hands also is connected to the tongue. <laughs> For I have kept the ways of the Lord. I have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judges were what? Before me. If his judgments are before that person, he's before that person. I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also blameless before him. And I kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore the Lord has recompensed me. In other words, he rewarded me. He promoted me. According to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my, with my hands. He says, he's merciful. He will, sh he, with the merciful, he'll show himself mercy. With the blameless, he'll also show himself blameless. With the pure, he'll show himself pure. With the devious, you'll show yourself shrewd. But you will save the humble people. But look, but will bring down haughty looks. Again, rewards to the consistent, righteous, and clean hands that promote advancement. And re what he'll do then, he re begins to remove harmful limitations from us. In other words, bondages. Attempting to, again, the enemy's always trying to attempt to return the heart back to the foundation of pride. God's trying to remove harmful limitations with healthy ones. You know, there's something that I, I've always learned with the Lord is, when you want something, he knows. Not everyone is going to get what you want. Amen? Even when you ask for it. The word says, ask and you shall receive. Amen? But there are things, look at, when you have a true relationship with the Lord, you don't have to ask for things. You have a relationship with him. You know it's coming, no matter what. If he asks you to do something, you do it. Why? Because he's always got something better and more. He loves to do more. 
That's why he said, I've come to bring life and life abundantly. But people are missing out on life and life abundantly. Because they're always trying to bring their own abundance instead of allowing God to bring it. Amen? Does everybody understand? Man, he knows what we need. He wants to bring it abundant. He wants to make a way. He wants us to be a sign and wonder. But he doesn't want you to be wealthy and be a moron. Amen? That's not a good sign and wonder, is it? <laughs> but he wants us to prosper. It says as the soul converts in prosperity according to the character of Christ, he can trust you more. Man, I've always learned when something doesn't go the way I thought it was going to go, I know he's doing something different. And that's okay. I'm just going to sit in the seat. I'll be chauffeured by Jesus. Where do you want to, where do you want to go, Lord? Just take me. You know, see, there's always a, Lord, I don't, people, when people are thinking, I don't understand, Lord. Why haven't you given me this or why? Well, look what you did with this person. Look what you did with that person. God ain't looking at them. He's looking at you. Maybe you haven't earned his trust yet. Maybe you haven't earned something. That's why you ain't moved yet. Maybe it's you he's waiting on. You may be waiting on him, but he says, I'm waiting on you. To what? Change your attitude. Change your conduct. Change your behavior. Begin to act more like me. And then I'll remove any limitations. Amen? Acts 17. Seventeen twenty two and verse twenty two. Is everybody there? Then Paul stood in the midst of the uh, Areopagus and said, "Men of Athens, I perceive in all things that you are very religious." For as I was passing through the, and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with the inscription to the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing him, I proclaim to you. God who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of all heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. Nor is he worshiped with men's hands as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. And he has made from one blood every nation of man to dwell on the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and what? Boundaries or limitations of their dwellings so that they should seek the Lord and hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being as also some of your own po poets have said, for we are his Offspring. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone or something shaped by art and men's devising. Surely these times of ignorance God has overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this by raising him from the dead. Healthy limitations, boundaries. Amen? As people cross over these healthy limitations, they step into unhealthy limitations of self-centeredness and pride. And see, the enemy loves to draw people, draw people over. And what does he mess with? The thoughts. That's, that's the only place he can get you. The thoughts. James 1. James 1, verse 2. Hallelujah. My brethren and my sister and count it all what? Joy when you fall into various challenges or trials, 
temptations, knowing that the testing of your <laughs> trust in God <laughs> produces patience. It's called faith. Can you trust him to make a way? Can you trust him? Be anxious for nothing and trust him. <laughs> but let patience have its perfect work. That you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. I'm telling you, he doesn't want us to lack a thing. But too many people say they know him, but they don't trust him. They can't wait. Amen? If anyone you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven or tossed by the wind. For let not that person suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. That's a limitation from God. No promotion, no getting. You'll stay there until you step into my character. Is everybody okay? Testing of your trust in him. See, he wants to expose and remove harmful limitations and replace them with healthy ones. But so many people won't let him. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Glory. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy verse 1 ver uh 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 3. Let's speak it. I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience as my forefathers did as without ceasing I remember you in my prayers night and day greatly desiring to see you being mindful of your tears that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded is in you also. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. Man, you talk about a limitation. Fear. But power. Where there's fear, there's no power. And love, where there's fear, there's no love. And a sound mind, where there's fear, there's no sound mind. There's confusion. Amen? Fear is the strongest limitation of bondage. It steals identity, and it steals healthy limitations. And I'm going to close at First Peter 4. How many of y'all know fear is anxiety, anxiousness, insecurity, fear? It's a killer. First Peter chapter 4, verse 1. Let's speak it together. Is everybody okay? Are you getting something tonight? You know, God is tightening things up more and more and more. That narrow path is getting tighter and tighter. We used to like dance through it. Now it's going like this. Hallelujah. Verse 1. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves. Say what? Arm yourself. Arm up. With the same thoughts of God. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the loss of man, but for the will of God. See, this is where self-centeredness prevents that. When an individual is self-centered, they can't fulfill the will of God. Listen, you can go out there and do all kinds of things for God, but you can't fulfill the will of God. Does everybody understand that? Because you're still doing things according to your way. You may go out there and be doing all kinds of things for God, but you're doing it for selfish ambitions. Verse 3. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of 
the Gentiles, when we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. In regard to these, they think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. They will give an account to, uh, to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel was preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be what? Serious. And what? Watchful in your prayers. In other words, make sure you are seeing things in your prayer. God's exposing things. Let me tell you, he's always exposing stuff in us. All the time. Amen? Why? He gives you an opportunity. When you go to prayer, he gives you the opportunity to repent. Be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without what? Grumbling. Self-centeredness. As each one has received the gift, minister to it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it with the ability which God supplies that in all things God may be glorified. Ooh. Through Jesus Christ to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen? Healthy and unhealthy limitations. We're to recognize these things. It's our responsibility. Just know if things aren't moving according to the way you think, stop. Don't worry about it. Amen? Let God take over. But if you don't let him take over, you will receive an unhealthy limitation. And you'll sit there and wait and wait. You'll grumble, complain, and cry to God and pray, and he ain't answering it. <laughs> and most of us have experienced that at one time or another. <laughs> Why do it again? <laughs> Hello. Praise God. Arm up. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we give you all glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for your mercies and grace and faithfulness. We ask that you cover every seed that's been imparted tonight with the blood of Jesus and seal it with the anointing so it grows, grows and bears fruits and brings counsel, correction, conviction, and change to each and every one of us into your image and likeness in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. That means you agree.